Good day, Chief reporting for CTT. I'm going to do show and tell today. I'm going to do it from my photo album. I actually found the photos. I, like I said, I took a camera, normal camera, and I took over only two rolls of film and for some odd reason only a roll and a half. So I don't have pictures of the trailer that I picked up, which is deeply depressing because nobody else seemed to have any pictures after we got back home because I did ask around because I wanted to show how lopsided it was with the two different size wheels and, and plus I think I took a picture of the of the plate on it like I said it was something older than me it was manufactured in November of 1952 so it beat me by almost six seven months <clears throat> uh, looking through the pictures hopefully I can get all these correct and right as to what they're supposed to be uh, first time I've done this so bear with me I'm gonna be looking over the head that is a view from Cobar Towers looking through Cobar Towers. So we were basically on a second building back. Our battalion had like four or five buildings. And then there's another lovely view from our window. Same window and then right there again. So I'm not going to show every single picture because this is going to get monotonous. I don't know why I took two and three of the same thing. Uh, I got some more pictures here of Cobar Towers. Uh, basically, oh, here we go, <clears throat> our convoy, so, like I said, flat, 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 that's all we saw, <clears throat> and as you can see, the gray skies, it seems like the whole time that we were there in January and all the way up to the war until probably about mid-February, it was, it was overcast skies, and then, of course, the further we got north, it was overcast skies because of the, uh, all the oil wells being on fire. Bottom picture here is taken from my Humvee looking in my rear view mirror and then you can see the front end of a one of the vehicles that was towing our uh, our track vehicles and I think this was taken at our like I said our uh, our truck stop so there is you can barely make it out there is a plane in the center of that photo but like I said more flat skies <clears throat> and picture here in the middle is all our vehicles after they were unloaded all the track vehicles and some of the soft vehicles formed up to make a convoy and I think we drove kinda like a lazy diamond pattern because angled out like a spearhead like the what the delta wave from the one movie <clears throat> and while we were eating breakfast this is my humvee there the little specks that you can probably make out those are helicopters flying overhead headed towards the north whether i don't know what they were doing because they don't look really from here they look like hueys so they don't look like they're attack helicopters and like i said that was my humvee that's where we were eating and like i said that's where that sergeant major came out from tap line road drove across came out and yelled at us you know what the hell are you guys doing don't you know there's a war on you guys are running around with your cavalars off and we all looked at him like we said you know the war started and he's like no oh, well no not really but yeah <clears throat> and also as you can see on the hood of this vehicle we don't have the orange panels yet Looking through these pictures, I finally realized that we took uh, canvas bags because we had the nylon canvas bags and we had to slice them. And then we somebody found orange paint and delivered it to all the units. And uh, so we had to paint orange panels so we could put orange panels. So when aircraft flew, <clears throat> excuse me, okay. <clears throat> Don't know why I'm losing my voice. But aircraft flying overhead, they would see orange panels and they knew not to bomb that particular vehicle. Now this is battalion. <clears throat> this middle picture, as you can see in the distance, which looks like a skylight, <clears throat> is uh, battalion, all the battalion vehicles. And right above my finger, I don't know if you can make it out, but there, that's one of the three shower heads of the wooden shower facilities that they built for us and we would have water trucks come through daily drive by and then you know hey over here over here over here wave them over and you know have them fill our uh, 
tanks on top of them. They had like uh, six six fifty five gallon drums. So you know, don't don't take a long shower, <clears throat> and to bake in the sunlight. Uh, a few more pictures here. Basically, just things around. <clears throat> this is a photo of the camouflage uh, bag that held the camouflage inside of it. That's what I had in front of my foxhole at first, my slit trench that I dug because I had a slit trench, put my my cot down there and then I put a, you'll see a picture of this in a little bit, but that's supposed to be frost on that. I woke up, like I said, I woke up a couple mornings and I looked across and oh, there's frost. And yeah, I woke up after sunlight because like I said, we had stand two didn't kick in until we drove across the, the depression, I think, and then we started doing sand, stand twos in the morning when we uh, were getting closer and closer to the border. Because before we were just probably, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe 10, 15, 20 miles north of the Tap Line Road when we first deployed over there and had it set up our base camp. That's a helicopter dusting off by one of our tents, so you can see how much dust he was kicking up just to take off. Uh, more vehicles. Let's see. <clears throat> this is part of our camp. A series of photos here. I don't know if you can make out, but there's a Abrams tank moving through. So, am I out front? So... <laughs> Our, our friendly forces started driving by and so I just took a few pictures of units passing by us where we sat at our base camp and they of course got further. Um, <clears throat> military intelligence motto is always out front so we I guess we were out front briefly but we were nowhere near the, the border between Iraq and Kuwait and or Saudi Arabia and Kuwait yet or Iraq at that time because we we deployed <clears throat> excuse me, where we would have moved through Iraq first. Like I said, I watched a video of, that was day by day of the operations for Desert Storm, so I got to figure out what 1st Infantry Division did while we were over there. This is a picture of my first hooch. I don't know if you can make it out. Lovely slit trench that I dug. That's a poncho that I used. We, had, we brought over the tent poles. And plus we brought over those four wooden poles, or three wood, four wooden poles that we had to take with us that were supposed to hold up the mosquito net. I don't think anybody ever used a mosquito net the whole time we were over there. We didn't seem to have any problem with bugs, even with all the uh, dead bodies that were probably lying throughout the battlefield, you know, days and weeks in later that were going to be coming up. <clears throat> So, my hooch and my TC's hooch, Specialist Rodney. That's our first rendition. We found out after a few little bit of wind, and we were like, ah, we can always improve. You know, we can always upgrade. So we did. So this is my, this is after the sandstorm. So that's my new streamlined roof. Like I said, it didn't rain too much, but when it did rain, at least I had a more streamlined roof. And this is part of the sandstorm. As you can see, before. just a lot of, like I said, just started blowing and blowing, got thicker and thicker and thicker, and finally got to the point where I'm like, I'm not going to stand out here and watch anymore. Uh, <clears throat> picture of my TC, Rodney, standing with another soldier from the company. That's my vehicle, the, the Humvee that I drove, and there's our 577, the one that I worked out of, and the one that we constantly had to set the vestibule up, and like I said, we'd get to a spot. Like one time, he set up, company commander set us right up inside of an artillery battery, all these big long barrels on self-propelled guns, and one was pointed directly at our back door, and I was like, I hope they don't fire point blank, because then we are dead. This is us set up someplace out in the desert, and in the distance you can see self-propelled 
vehicles driving by from the reserves because the reserves did not get a chance to paint their desert sand yet. And like I said, <clears throat> every time you do a uniform mistreatment, a sergeant major shows up, but this time it wasn't a sergeant major, but this is myself and Rodney, my TC. Uh, we put on our boonie caps, and we no more than got this picture taken. I can't remember who took the picture, but we more, no more than got this picture taken. A higher-ranking sergeant came by, who gave you permission to wear your boonie caps? I'm like, it's just for a picture, okay? We're not wearing them, but, you know, oh, we got to show respect to the, yeah, to the NCOs. So, as I said, the orange panel, I don't know if you can make it out, but this is an Abrams tank driving, and there's an orange panel in the back of his vehicle. So, like I said, we had lots of tanks driving by. Now, the day of the convoy that I said that we came across that T-62, uh, at first it was, uh, you know, we stopped the convoy. The British vehicle drove ahead, 203s to the front, so I ran to the front, and then no more than got to the front, and that's when headquarters company, all the uh, the cooks and the clerks and the, the motor pool personnel, they all went to the left because there was a trench line running parallel with us. So they took the trench line, and I think this is probably before we took the pictures. I know this is going to be hard to make out, but the first photo here, if you see a bright speck in the very middle on the horizon, that is the T-62 tank exploding. There you can see it a little bit better with the black smoke coming off of it. So that tells you how far away somebody made out just the turret of the T-62. Like I said, it was hauled down. So the whole entire body of the tank was down in a pit. So you couldn't see it from a distance. So the only thing sticking out was its turret. So how somebody saw that from an MI unit, so to speak, it's not like we had any scouts out. We didn't have anything out. We were just driving in a convoy, like I said, soft vehicles, hard vehicles, soft vehicles. As a matter of fact, in that picture, you can see that the soft vehicle is, is there on the left, and then the hard vehicle is there on the right. So, supposedly, he was, the, when the British guys went inside the tank after getting the crew out, they went inside, and they looked down the scope, and that barrel was pointed right at that vehicle right there. So if they would have fired, that vehicle would have just would have went, would have went up, and there was uh, uh, three members from my company inside of that. So we would have had our first casualties, immediate casualties, if they fired, and that probably would have been a very messy day. And speaking of the British liaison vehicle, I didn't capture it all, but it's in that photo there. So I don't see it, so it doesn't focus on me, but. It's got wheels, it's got tracks, so I don't know what it is. It's some kind of just an APC, because it wasn't a, uh, a scimitar tank that I went and talked to later, which I uh, don't have a picture of either. I didn't take a picture of the scimitar tank. So this is victory day, so to speak. Uh, this is not in, I ran out of sleeves for that photo album. So that is the battalion all back together again, greater share of it, and you can see orange panels on the front of vehicles, and you can see American flags like crazy, because they're, <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> Excuse me. I didn't realize that so many people had brought American flags along to fly. I wish I had, so that way I'd have an American flag from the war. The only American flags I got are the ones I wore on my sleeve. So that's another picture of the convoy. And that's also the same position where we were parked. There were rows of those lawn darts. Don't see any of the lawn darts. They're outside our perimeters, and that's where the female soldier, a sergeant, who was told not to go anywhere near those, proceeded to go out and do that anyway. Uh, this is a blurry picture to begin with, so don't worry about it. It's got a um, one of my vehicles with an American flag flapping in the breeze, driving by an Iraqi APC or something like that. And <clears throat> part of my unit, we're just investigating these empty vehicles. There's a lot of abandoned vehicles after the war. We saw them like crazy. 
and there's another picture of an abandoned vehicle so that's kind of it for my photos like I said they ran out I had pictures of the two dogs we adopted those dogs were greatly appreciated because like I said we had the 4-4 deuce generator on top of the uh, 577 I know a lot of numbers a lot of acronyms in the military so you couldn't hear anything <clears throat> and in order to hear anything you'd have to go out at a great distance excuse me to guard but we didn't want to do that because our guard position generally was only about 50 feet in front of the vehicle but you still got the generator so those dogs at night were benefit because they would generally come out to the guard post because nobody we didn't want them to go in our tents we didn't want to go anywhere where we slept because they were full of fleas or we had flea collars on them and uh, but they would come out to the guard post and of course lay down but you know dogs got better senses than a, than a human does so if their ears perked up or their head came up and looks in general direction that's where you know where to look so they were they were kind of a benefit they were an extra extra part of the guard force and of course when we had to up and abandon them after the position that we were at we weren't going to take them on the vehicles with us so we snipped off all the um, flea collars so that they wouldn't when they grow larger that they wouldn't choke themselves to death on the flea collars uh, do have a sad story about this though because one of the places that we did park in Kuwait we parked next to a artillery unit so we were here on the right artillery unit was over there on our left and one day ping ping bullets were flying by and we're like what is going on <clears throat> excuse me well my captain went over and found out what was going on a lieutenant was having his soldiers throw food to dogs because they were also being overrun with dogs so to speak and then this lieutenant was taking pot shots at him even in our direction so my captain tore him a new asshole as we say in the military gave him a chewing out a dressing down and no more ping 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 so that is it for this show and tell i'll dive into the war chest next week so this is chief signing out and remember freedom's not free hug a vet thank a vet kiss a vet do whatever you can do a vet you know even buy them a meal maybe because there are some vets who are wandering the streets so if you see a homeless person and if you can find out if he's a vet or not get him something to eat please i asked that we we didn't take care of our Vietnam vets and sometimes we don't even take care of the vets that we're getting now because sometimes with that post trauma stress disorder they just wander off. So this is Chief signing out. Show and tell. Bye.